Love Line is meant for an adult audience. For an adult audience. Love Line may contain sexually oriented content. With sexually oriented content. Listener discretion is advised. Listener discretion is advised. This is Love Line. Love Line. Love Line. Love Line. Love Line. Love Line. With Adam Carolla and Dr. Drew. Hey everybody, it's Loveline. I'm Adam, that's Dr. Drew. Phone number 1-800-LOVE-191. Dr. Drew is a board-certified physician and addiction medicine specialist. Tonight, Angie from The Apprentice. Woohoo! Thursday nights, 9 o'clock, <laughs> NBC. She was uh, s canned the week before last, right? Because Chris yes. got it last week. Yes, he did. Do you, uh, first off, you have a, a rare distinction of being a guest on the show and representing a show that Drew has actually seen That's and true. watched and enjoys. <laughs> and a reality show, nonetheless. And then, in the both of us, I mean, there's... Oh. Uh, Rarely anything we both watch together. I think this is Family Guy, <laughs> Family Guy, and this, and, this, that's and about it. Family Guy. We watch simultaneously, <laughs> but this we watch together. <laughs> Do you understand? Joined, joined. You understand? That's that so touching. I'm man, so glad that I could bring the two of you a together. A man bridge between the two of us. <laughs> a fleshy man bridge. The only thing. Yeah, baby. The either side <laughs> of the chasm. One or the other. Yes. Either way. <laughs> odd, odd weeks, even weeks. That's how we work it. Angie and I uh, know each other. I didn't even know. I, I, I watch a show and I didn't even remember that I knew Angie and that's how stupid I am. Uh, what's her name? The uh, hot little tamale came on here about a month and a half ago who uh what the hell's her name audrey here? audrey, audrey. audrey. Yes, audrey the very beautiful yet uh unrealistic stunningly gorgeous the gorgeous yet unrealistic audrey <laughs> came in here oh is she a mess <laughs> Woo, man feisty fun feisty fun feisty fun but oh there's there's issues there she's baby she's young she's, she's young, young. yeah, yeah. She'll, she'll i was young too i didn't have that many issues but. man you had issues i had issues but not that many yeah. but uh Vivacious, beautiful, and young. What can you say? Back right. in, she got mad when I tried to crack her on some of those issues a little bit. Well, I mean, here's the thing. You, you can't come on this show and say that, uh, you know, you slept in a car and your uh, your dad's in jail and not expect us to do a little little probing. Around, a little yeah. searching there. And, uh, and we know that means, like, here, you know, here's what we hear all night. Uh, I was abused. I was molested. My dad's in jail. I'm fine. <laughs> let's and, go. Let's uh, get on with it. But I've worked through it. I worked through it. <laughs> it. Used to be a problem. I'm crazy. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that was, uh, that's when I was 14. I'm 17 now. It's all behind me. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We know it all work out. Uh, Angie, I knew, uh, let, let's see. I'm, I'm trying to think when, when we met. I mean, it could have been 15 years ago. It could have been 12 years ago. Maybe 13, 14 Something years ago. Like we should pick, uh. It was Todd. Todd. <laughs> now, that's the other thing, too, because Audrey said Angie knows you, and she knows you through Todd, and Todd is a uh, Todd is Angie's old boyfriend, who's, uh, as I recall, Drew, are you allergic, are you allergic wow. to, to uh, Angie. comedy Angie. here? Angie. Angie's crazy. <laughs> allergic to me. Uh, we, uh, we, we figured out that uh, Angie's old boyfriend was a good friend of mine way back. A good friend? Yeah. Oh, back wow. in the day. I don't think they ever did the man bridge, though. Oh. I'm we did not do. So don't feel... No. Uh, I beg your pardon. He's told me used, all of his previous Drew. partners. Uh, now, how we did an you? oral man bridge, Drew, that uh, I didn't feel was Jermaine. Uh, I, kind of, I'm hurt, uh, and I'm <laughs> feeling a little funny about okay, this. Okay, let's... An awkward sh moment. We'll let that go. Let's, uh, it's getting we'll man weird, bridge. Adam. We'll man bridge during the break <laughs> and make it all better. I'll suck all the venom out of you with my oh, bridge. Oh, it's getting more and more exciting here. Yeah. It's, we also oh, call by the minute, it, we, we just started. We also call it in-flight fueling. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying, Drew? Yeah. All right, so Angie, uh, Angie and I hadn't seen you. Of course, I was a civilian when I when oh, I yes. saw Angie last. Yes. She knew I had amazing potential, but had yeah, no yeah, idea the that. heights I would climb to. Absolutely. Making uh, beat-off jokes all night for a 13-year-old. She had no No, idea. I'm impressed, though, I have you to are. say, Adam, That's that amazing. you're actually being paid for it. It's the same Adam from 12 years ago, but now he's making money. It's not just yeah. a drunken barroom uh, conversation. New, it's... Live radio. Whole new stuff <laughs> feel. <laughs> radio. Uh, Angie, so so here's the thing. So I love The Apprentice. Uh, Drew and I, like I said, are uh, devotees of the show. Um, I love all the Mark Burnett stuff. I just do. Mm -hmm. I like I like The Contender. I like Survivor. You know, he puts his uh, stink on it. It's enjoyable. It yeah. I thought you were great on the show. 
Uh, let's see. Last week's challenge was the uh, Pontiac mm -hmm. challenge. Your challenge was which challenge? Wearable technology. Oh, American Eagle. That's the laptop right. in the hoodie. That's right. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. <laughs> My favorite with Angela is when they made the hotel. Yeah. The hotel thing, and she pulled everyone in the van and went, uh, what the hell's going on here? Yeah. New toilets. <laughs> Give me a break. Uh, yeah, yeah. So now, do you feel, now you, you were the team leader on, the, on that challenge. And that's cafe. No, no, no. I no, wasn't. You, oh, you you weren't on the uh, on the wearable technology. No, I was one. not the project that's manager. That's why that you was got Alex. Rail, you got railroaded. Yeah. 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 That's the only thing about the show I don't really understand. Sometimes is the the, the team fails. The uh, the team leader doesn't always get the brunt of the whatever. Well. Eh, but my, Angie wasn't really. Angie forgot something, or oh, you know, you know what it is. I'll tell you what it is. Here's what it seemed like to me. I... Angie's one of these people, Drew. You know this well. This is why you're resentful, and my, and I'm the same way too. Angie's one of these people that gets a lot of stuff done. Yeah. So every every uh, all roads lead to Angie. Everything gets dumped in her lap. You you wrangle the models. You design the this. You make sure that. And then, and then when you fall short on one of them, it's your fault. Right. Meanwhile, all anyone else was doing was delegating things to you. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yes, I, I feel your pain. Do mm -hmm. you feel that's what happened in, uh, a couple weeks back? Absolutely. But, you know, yeah, you're not it's who I am. I take on responsibility. I did learn a lesson, though. You know, there was a couple times in that task that I said to Alex, no, you know, have him do it. i, I got to work on this presentation, or I've got to finish what I'm doing right now. And Alex wouldn't have any part of it. And I think I got a little carried away, or my take on it is my ego got in the way of, fine, I can handle it. I can do it. I can do it all. And the reality is I can't do it all. And, and I think I showed that on national television going, um, American, um, well, this is, uh, you know. Were you glad to see Chris go last week? A little bit. Yeah, evidently. Yeah. No, you know what? I would have been much happier to see Chris go the week I went. Um, oh, that would have been fair. That makes sense. I actually huh? watched, when I watched the last week's episode, I, I thought Alex should have been fired. Actually, I didn't think Chris should have been fired. Even though Chris is a disaster and you got to love him, he's the son you wish you never had and all of that. His heart's in it. He's a good kid. He's yeah, 21. Seven, seven failures in a row. Yeah, like, he's a train wreck. Uh, if, if it's not his fault, then he's cursed. Either way, he's got to go. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, he should have gone months ago. All right, so, so Angie, are you now, well, obviously, how does it work now? You can show your face yeah. around Absolutely. where you were sort of sequestered you, before? Right, you cannot be seen in public until, you, it, while you're still on the show, you cannot yeah. be seen in so public. So what could you do? I mean, I mean, Audrey said you guys were being put up at a hotel. Oh, yeah. You guys were, had activities and things. Right. But how, what do you, you know, from the moment it is public, filmed until the moment you kicked off on air? No, no, no. No, you're, while you're being filmed, you're sequestered. While it's being filmed, you're sequestered. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then after, uh, when the show starts in January, you're not allowed to make public appearances uh, um, with film, press, and radio. Now, I do cabaret, and you know, I'm a singer. Oh, me and too. I talk to... <laughs> <laughs> I'm a professional singer. Oh, yeah. And uh, um, um, I was allowed to... <laughs> Don't alone in the... Uh, room, room, come, come in where the music uh, plays. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's me. <laughs> oh, I, I've heard you being Sell fine. it, sell it, oh, baby. Oh, I will. What? Um... Yeah. yeah, you can't do public appearances. I was invited to charity events and things like that. Can't. But it's not like you can't go can't. to Starbucks. You can't go you can to grocery go to store. store. Right. Yeah, right. You can go to Starbucks, you, can, you know. But then after you're officially voted off or right. fired, bring it on. Right. You can go uh, do what you like. Do you make the rounds yes. and all that stuff? Absolutely, yeah. Did the Today Show. Dennis Miller, Dennis Miller loved that. Uh, Excess Hollywood, all those. All those. Uh, Tony Dan's. Had a good time on that. Yeah, Dennis it was Miller. great. I like Dennis Miller, too. I love Dennis Miller, and he loved me. He's a big fan of the show. He loved me on the show. And he, uh, was great. Yeah, he gets a little, he gets a bad rap sometimes, I think. Really? Wait, wait. Oh, you don't know that? No. <laughs> well, he's, he's a good guy. Wow. No, he is. What do you know? He likes this show. That's why he's a good guy. He I've done his show a bunch of times, and he's been Angie. very... Um, I know. He, he's I, a lot... i got to be honest. He's a lot like you as it comes to... As uh -oh. it pertains to the show. He's very intolerant of BS. Oh, really? Yeah. And, you know, that's fine. Well, who, who, you know. <laughs> I show up at uh, 9.59 and uh, 21 seconds. No, but I remember when in TV, if stuff was, you know, not sort of moving oh, along, TV. you know. Yeah. I like him. It's good. No, here's what I'm saying about Dennis Miller. He, he has... Not the world's greatest reputation as being uh, a nice guy or a good guy by uh, p people have worked with him. 
and is not beloved uh, amongst uh, fellow comedians and i and uh, uh, but i think respect it yes and and uh i have no you know there's there's a few guys that are out there that are like this but i've done the guy show a couple times and it, it was fast it was fun it yeah. was easy and easy. i enjoyed it and i've talked to him a few times it's always been enjoyable so i don't know but i'm on the other hand i'm not calling these other people liars i'm sure you got to do something to earn it you know what i'm saying yeah yeah but I, yeah. I think I think people like you and and Dennis Miller and that you know when you've got your face on the show, and it's your reputation on the line. Yeah, <laughs> I think you're going to be demanding. I think it's it's a different I've thing. I've said that many times. About well, I think true. it's a different thing than somebody who works behind the scenes or whatever. Says, don't touch the cash register. <laughs> <laughs> just point at my face. A face like that. Yeah. <laughs> wow. So painful. All right. Here we go. Sabrina. Hi. You're 25. Yes. What's up? Well, um, I, I would have to put out that I have a very wild imagination, um, but I've always had a problem with actually mm, doing na nasty things, I guess what people would consider kind of dirty, dirty things, but yet in my head, I just love and lust to want to do those things. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. What things? And, well, ugh. Well, I guess being with, um, if anybody hits on me or anything, it's just like, oh, yeah, you know, try something. I'll say no, but please do it, you know. Or yes, yeah, so you're, you're one of those people that likes to be swept away. Yeah. Somebody somebody has to take, make it okay for you to do things because it's outside of your control. But you don't, yes. do you do anything with these people? N no, no, I don't. It's such a fight. Um, no one has sort of broken through that. Mm. Yeah, and and you know I've even gotten attracted to girls and stuff. And yeah, but you don't well, you don't do anything. A, a no, lot of I, this here, yeah. here's what this all means to me is that there, there's an internal split. There's a good Sabrina and a bad Sabrina. Mm. Yeah. The, the sexual mm. part is a bad Sabrina, and you'll have nothing to do with that. But you sure as hell want somebody else to bring it out. Mm. Yeah. And so you need to have a bad guy to bring out the bad Sabrina. And I bet you have a history of doing that kind of thing. Drew has uh, two sides. He's got the boring side. <laughs> and the more boring. The stultifying. <laughs> stultifying. Boring. Yeah, it's a boring, medium boring, and it's like super coma. boring. Coma. And then there's coma. And well, you, there's know, you know what I think, Sabrina, too? I think, I think society tells women that it's not okay to enjoy sex or to have a bad side. But, and it but, is. But now wait a minute. It is okay. But, but wait yeah, a minute. Let her but, go. In, but in what world is that? I mean, every women's I know, magazine, it, every they all, but no, everywhere you look, it's women need to do all these crazy things. It's all you see everywhere. <laughs> right. We, 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 we left wait, behind. Wait, there's an underground, Dr. Drew. <laughs> 40 years ago, we left behind this thing no. that women shouldn't I, All right, here's a good point. Yes, I'm going to agree with uh, my colleague, Angie. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Drew, you're out. Uh, no, the, the, here's the thing. And Drew and I have this same opinion. We share the same opinion here, which is, you know, everyone says, you know, society says mm. there's a lot of society, like, you know, society's trying to keep the black man down. Society doesn't <laughs> want this man to have success. Society. Well, first off, I, I, I know society is always just white males between, you know, 18 and 56. <laughs> but I, first off, I don't know who that society is. Number one. Number two. We don't have a vested interest in really keeping anyone down so much uh, because we're not so interested. We're off doing our own thing and trying to trying to uh, make our own stuff. But I don't think society uh, wants to keep women down. I think women feel weird, and and I think it's woman on woman crime. I think what happens yeah. is there's there's five women. They go out to a club. One of them goes home with a guy mm -hmm. and makes it with him in their apartment, their uh, hotel in Vegas, the and four. the other four turn on her. At, at breakfast they the shun. next day. Yeah. Oh, my God. And they shun. What a whore. It, now, the guy <laughs> ain't complaining about it. Not at and all. society ain't complaining about it. It's her four girlfriends and actually, yeah, who are soci turning on her. Sociological studies have shown this over and again, that the, the so-called double standard that women complain mm -hmm. about is initiated by men. Men make note of it, but it's sustained by women. Right. The so, and then, so women always say society or males are uncomfortable or intimidated by our sexuality or whatever. It's really their peers, I think, who turn on them. And, and who chimpanzee pods them. behave in the same way. They do. <laughs> when, when, there's a, the, ah. when there's a wayward female, all the other females turn their back. Wow. They actually yeah. shun physically. The pods. When there's a Those wayward. There pods of chimpanzees? Chimpanzee think, pods. Yeah. They, yeah. Well, there's like pods of whales. Yeah. I, I just, that word just came out, I imagine. Hmm. Marrying up in 
and use drive. You know, we ought to... We're bunches gonna, we're, and bunches We're going to get back to this, but this whole thing with, like, well, there's a there's a calf, and this one has a cub, and this one has a pod, <laughs> and this one has a gaggle, and this one has a, a gander, and that one has a flock. Let's just figure out one thing. Let's, a bunch. Let, I like pod. Let's stay with pod. A group. <laughs> what a group. A group or bunch, pod. Let's just figure out the one thing, and it would be the same thing for geese as it would be for catfish as it would be for bears, and then let's go with cub. Because <laughs> I'll tell you what, that I would kid was better. I, I like I, I, I beg to kid is weird. I'll tell you why. Because I don't want to eat kid. All right, all right. I cub. do want to eat cub. All right, cub. You do? You want to eat cub? I'd eat some cub over some. <laughs> but cat. not puppy. Yeah, cub. but not puppy. Yeah. No puppy. I don't want to eat any puppy. I don't want to eat no, pounded no kitten. No cub puppy. Nothing. I don't eat. I don't eat pa- pounded puppy cutlet. Duckling. <laughs> <laughs> I'll have some pounded cub. Oh, my Sounds Lord. All right. All right, point is, is, let's just pick one because it, it gets tough when you start getting into whales right, and moose and enough. stuff like that. Right, what were we talking pack. about? We didn't do pack. Well, now there's a difference. We're talking about Sabrina and, and her dirty thoughts. There's a difference between promiscuity and being in a relationship with somebody you trust and doing kinky, you know, fun, yeah. working See, out fantasies and you, things. You're absolutely that was right. what my buddy Todd was doing on Angie 13 <laughs> years ago. Believe you me, those, those apartment walls are paper thin. Paper thin. Yeah. What would you hear? <sighs> what didn't I hear? That's real. That's really. That's, you should, it'd be a faster answer if you just asked me what Did I hear didn't kids hear. Or cubs? <laughs> there was, uh, it was attempt at cub making. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. Uh, good stuff. Good times. But good Sabrina times. is really typical of a trauma survivor, though. Uh-oh. Where they get this internal split Mm-mm. with the good and the bad, and then they can't get at the bad unless they're with a bad person. Sabrina? They, feel they can't yeah. connect the two up so they can experience it with yeah. Do you ever get abused? Um, well, I've had uh, some people get maybe a little too close to me. Nobody in there, like actual no, no, no. family I mean, I, family. No. Oh. Uh-oh. You I know, the close family, knit family. Yeah. Family yeah. of origin you're talking All right. about. All right. You sound um, frazzled. You sound sort of like you don't know yourself very well. A survivor. No, How about a no, therapy? I don't. You know, I've, I've never really had an orgasm, so the no. lust thing for me is very, very much a part of. Angie was just multiple. Wanting oh, yeah. it. Oh, you, know, you were counted. You were counted. I couldn't, I couldn't miss it. Very healthy. Instead of sheep, you just counted. I couldn't miss it. Counted paper thin walls. One two, paper three, three, Is it really four. between what what was go- the debauchery in the next room and me? It's just like a snare drum thickness. Sorry, so Sabrina, just, what were you saying, honey? Yeah, <laughs> pow, <laughs> rim shot after rim shot, endless, bottomless. All right, Sabrina, no, I, get some yeah. therapy. <laughs> well, Sabrina, right, did you did somebody did somebody touch you inappropriately or something when you were a kid? Well, you know, for one of my birthdays, you know, somebody gave me a really long, long kiss that was completely inappropriate, but I felt that, you know, and I've had, like, a doctor. Um, no. All right. Do now something. there's something. No, no. When you were, like, under, no. like, eight years old, what happened? No, I don't think it was. I don't think it was. Hold on. I'm getting back. Look. For my birthday, somebody gave me a long, long uh, kiss. Already freaked out. She's that, already freaked out. She's already freaked out. I had a doctor who. Already freaked out. Right. Well, first of all, mol- How can you mol- do that? That's amazing that you guys have been doing this a long it. time. Mol- I know. Molesters molest. They don't give, give girls extra long kisses. Know. Uh-huh. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's her interpretation. Right, Something's right. wrong. All right, Sabrina, what's wrong? Before well, no, that. I just, you know, I want, I want, okay, first of all, I, I want care. to have what an did orgasm. The, what, no, did, no. what did the doctor do to no, you? No, no, but wait I'm before. curious. I'm just curious what you think the doctor did to you. Well, no, I know what he did. He was rubbing up against me when he thought he was, I was under uh, anesthesia really well. Um, and then I, when I was done, I, I looked across the room and he was adjusting his pants. So I know exactly what happened. <laughs> he had it. But he I had, didn't want to say anything because I was too embarrassed. He had intercourse but, with you? No, no, he was just rubbing himself up against me. <clears throat> and and uh, what, what what procedure were you undergoing? Hopefully, um, actually, me? funny, I, you know, I was getting a wisdom tooth uh, pulled and stuff, and uh, so I I knew exactly what was going on, but I don't. Yeah, think. oh no, one hundred and ten percent. Dirty yeah, about it, you know, yeah, and yeah. stuff. But I just I I yeah. love it when men. Ugh, that was a very Aren't sexually you? charged oh, situation. Oh, yeah, because both. I can't have an orgasm. And by the way, is it, is it, is it, is it Love po- me some dental is work. It, is it possible to yank, uh, you know, <laughs> oh. an impacted molar from somebody's mouth without your chest or groin or whatever going up against Impossible. their elbow or Impossible. their shoulder? Impossible. Rubbing up against me. Yeah. And then you saw him, of course, he was adjusting his pants. I mean. Uh, but these are the kind of people that bring lawsuits against, Absolute, against people. Abs- all the time. This, these are the kinds of people right. that do that. All right. Sabrina. 
Yeah. You're, the dentist didn't molest you. You're not hot enough. I'm sorry. <laughs> I, now, look, get some therapy. Would you please your mess? Okay. Would you get some therapy? Don't worry about your orgasm. There's something cooking in you. Big time. Hmm. There okay. is something brewing. Go get some therapy. Therapy's for for losers. Thank Ooh. you, Drew. I did not say that. Well, sure sound like Are you, you did. Mormon. <laughs> All right. Look, everybody, uh, we don't have enough time to specifically figure out what's up. Something's up. Our spidey sense is tingling. Go get some therapy. Yeah. All right. For sure, needs to bring these assessment. Oh, the fact oh, that those she can't have relationships, suitors. all that stuff, it's all bad, bad times. Wisdom teeth. I think when you find out what her family of origin was like, it would be major chaos. And she's young. She's 25. You've mm. got a lot of living to do. Yeah. But 25 never had a relationship. Mm. Jason? Yes, sir. Oh. Oh. I, and I'm picturing Sabrina over there. Believe me, that dentist Aww. is, he could find better rub against. I understand <laughs> there's something Stop. going on. I know it. Jason? Yes, sir. You're 25. Yes, I am. What's up? I uh, just got married on April 3rd, and uh, everything is going really well, but the uh, the wife uh, still won't return the favor when it comes to uh, oral sex. How come? Mm -hmm. Pardon me? Why not? I, I couldn't tell you. What does she tell you? Um, she, she doesn't, you know, she, she acts kind of shy about it. She, she kind of gets frustrated when I mention it. Hmm. Uh, but did so, she? Was she either this returning the favor beforehand? Either this is bogus, or you never mentioned it to her. No, I've mentioned it to her several times. And what does yeah, she matter say? Fact, matter of fact, we're on our honeymoon, and I brought it up a couple times. Just and what? You know. And what does she say? Uh, she says, uh, "Just give her time," and you know, she's never done it before. She doesn't really know how to do it, and she doesn't know how to jump into it. And all right, that's fair that. enough. That that's right. fair enough. Not really. No, but it's fair right. enough. I it's, mean, it's an a, answer. It's an answer. The fact is, though, <laughs> there's some people just don't just really get overwhelmed. Don't like that. They just for whatever right. reason. Some people had something happen to them. Somebody forced them to do something when they were a kid, and they just are traumatized by it and have flashbacks when they try to do that kind of thing. Yeah, there's a certain percentage of society that's just not into certain things, right? No matter what they are, right? And and that's it. You may have just uh, rolled the dice and came up snake eyes yeah. with this. On the other uh, hand, she's leaving the door open. She said, "Give me time. Let's try to work it out." Well, they're on their honeymoon. What's she gonna say? F off for the next fifty-five years? <laughs> yeah. mm -hmm. Might as well say it then. Drew heard it. Why not you? Yeah, but the uh, but you also may have gotten a trauma survivor, and because you're calling the show, we'll bet we're, we're going on trauma survivor. So, uh, where's her dad? Does she know him? How's that work? Oh yeah, she, she's extremely close to her dad. She comes from a really good background. Uh, she's you know real real innocent chick. I well, just ask her, Jason, if you if she ever saw something that bothered her, or if somebody made her do something along those lines that troubled her. And if the answer is no, then kind of bring her along, give her some time, and you know, work this out. It's like, all right, gonna, I will. Uh, uh, appreciate the advice. All right, yeah, that's well, it. That's mm -hmm. easy. Let's go to break. Does she sleep with her mouth open? Oh, stop. <laughs> well, some people, oh, my God. Some people you tried that with breathe, me, too. Breathe, breathe. Is that what that was about? That's that man bridge again. You uh, know, he said he fell. <laughs> <laughs> he slipped in the bathroom. I thought it was the funny. Bathroom. The bathroom was 80, 18 feet away. <laughs> 18 feet away. Yeah. Uh, Angie's here tonight from The Apprentice. A dear old friend I forgot about. <laughs> Didn't even know she was on the show. I was just like, uh, okay, Angie. I was a fan, and then uh, then I realized, no, oh, we know each other. We'll take ourselves a uh, quick break. The uh, Apprentice on Thursday nights, 9 o'clock, NBC, by the way. And we'll be right back after this. Hey, everybody. The love line, Adam. That's Dr. True. Angie is here tonight You're from fired. The Apprentice. I met her long before there was reality TV. Mm. Yes. I love the applause. <laughs> oh, but you probably knew that, didn't you, Dr. Drew? <laughs> this show was, well, she's a cabaret singer. There you go. <laughs> what do you got for us? You got a little cabaret What does that for tell us? you? What was was Adam, back in the day, was Adam your sort of Joel Grey when he could show up there with you? <laughs> yes. Oh, yeah. Actually, he was. He oh, was, he was my now. Joel Grey to my little Eliza. mascara on and a oh. derby. Welcome. I, I kind of saw you in like a tails with those, those hip high uh, leggings. Yeah, I mean like right. Oh, oh, with tails. Yeah, yeah. 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 And my capizios. Right. <laughs> dance shoes. Because let me tell you something, Gotta Drew. dance. The only time I feel free is when I'm dancing. Of course. <laughs> I like to punch anyone who ever said the, the only time I ever. I'm just like to hit him in the face. Whatever, 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 whatever falls. I feel free. 
Some, there was something about every movie from the 80s where someone had to explain to someone, man, you don't know what it's like to be out there on that motorcycle, man. Yeah. There, man, when I'm behind the wheel of that car, man, this is the only time I feel free. I'm alive. I'm alive. It's the only time I feel alive. <laughs> Weird blowhardy. Super <laughs> ultra. Th those guys all became our current day blowhards. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Yep. There were a-holes just 20 years ago. Yeah. Now they've made a, a smooth transition Graduated into blowhardom. Blowhards. <laughs> Here's what you got. Uh, yesterday's a-hole is today's blowhard. Because it's hard to be a blowhard when you're skinny and 24. Right, you're just an a-hole. Right. You're just an a-hole. Wait till you get in your 40s, your hair thins out a little, and you get a little spare tire around <laughs> your belly. A couple DUIs under your belt. Now you're blowhard. <laughs> Do you go from cocky to blowhard? <laughs> yeah, you could go from you cocky. Could go. You could go from cocky yeah. to blowhard, yeah. too. Yeah, although the co cocky, you, you go, that's more cocky like... Cocky criminal. <laughs> nah, it's just more like smart ass yeah. or something. Or maybe even bitchy as you get uh, older yeah. and cocky gets complainy or something yeah, like yeah. that. All right, where are we, Drew? Here we go. Used a vacuum pump on his peni. Chris? Who yeah. hasn't? 27? Oh, yeah. let me tell you what I heard come from the next room. The <laughs> debauchery. You're on like a slaughterhouse. <laughs> Screams. <laughs> well, they were they were next door to you. No, they actually no. were. Angie, we were not. Angie and uh, her boyfriend, who is a friend of, uh, they're in the same apartment or condo or something of uh, <laughs> a friend of mine from the uh, from the old comedy troupe. I see. Mm -hmm. they stay the by. night there. At the... uh, it didn't happen a time or two. Was a female. Yeah. Of... It happened. Okay. Mm -hmm. Katie. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Chris? I heard some noises, too. <laughs> Chris, how dare you? It was Adam farting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there was crying. some. crying. I and think it was and crying. And laughing maniacally. <laughs> yes. There's a fair amount of that. Chris? Yes. 27. All right, go ahead. All right. Uh, I was uh, wondering if there's any possibility of, like, uh, permanent damage from using a vacuum pump. Mm -hmm. on your I guess there's a possibility you can always you can rupture the corpus bodies within the penis that swell to cause erection really you can tear them and rupture them and things uh, well, the ones that are made for your penis typically they, not they you, probably don't produce enough in the no, uh, PSI no, I, department right I'm saying it's not like if you use it properly but if something I don't know you better get a shop vac shop vac I was gonna say yeah what's it, the problem what's going the on the reducer of course yeah Chris pardon me what's the problem <laughs> Well, I don't know. I just kind of uh, frequently find it as a hobby, almost. Well, what do you? What do you? What kind of device are you? Are you using? Um, it's actually a vacuum thing that you use on a car. Oh, but it's it's not those change operated ones at the coin That's What I was <laughs> car wash is the it? Gas station Immediately what came into my head. Yeah. No, it's the one you buy at the auto parts. Oh, okay. And uh, and is it is it plug it doesn't plug into your cigarette lighter in your car, does it? No, no, it's it's hand operated. Uh huh. Well to see now that's not meant for the penis. Yeah. Th that's uh that's all right. Chris, okay. whatever. All right. So if you put in a light socket, you'll hurt yourself. All right, Chris, all right, you're, 20, you're 27. This, I pr you better pray this is a bogus phone call. I rarely say this, but... We're praying for we're you praying on your behalf. We're praying for you that this is a horrible, bogus phone call, or you're just 27 living in Pittsburgh right. and putting a car <laughs> vacuum on your nards every night. <laughs> Have you met Sabrina, Chris? <laughs> all right, uh, don't, don't do it. Okay. Yeah, use common uh, yeah, sense. It's, it's, right, a, it's BS, of course. Right, I was just thinking about Angie and the and the, the man thing. I bet she'd appreciate your uh, <laughs> point of view on rape. Too. No, no, oh, yes. no, I have to organically get into that. Well, yeah. I can't be I can't be pushed into it. Just ask him sometime about rape. Yeah, <laughs> no. I'm like a cat. Organically when, ask him. About I'm like me. a cat when it comes to my comedy. I know we have to like uh, rub you slowly. No, I jump on your lap. You don't I chase see. me around the house and tell me it's time to cuddle. Okay. Uh, yeah. I'm just not in the mood. I'm going to go up on the refrigerator. <laughs> <laughs> see you guys later. <laughs> yeah, see, uh, you know, refrigerator used to be the uh, refuge for the cat. Now, uh, many houses, the thing's built in or it's kind of flushed in or the cabinets come around. It used to be a nice place, that top of the fridge. It was kind of warm. And cat stuff. could hang yeah. out up there. Yeah. You could hide junk up there if you didn't want the uh, kids getting to it. You know, the, the top of the fridge was a nice little stash. No, No more. No more. Yeah, it's all cabinets and uh, sub zeros and all that stuff. I'll we got one of those in a garage. I'll put a bunch of stuff up there. Oh, you get stuff on top of the fridge. There you go. It's old. Th you know, it's good. It's good. Good to hide stuff from kids on top of the fridge because they're only interested in what's in the fridge. They're not interested in what's on. Obviously, they can't see it, but they have no motivation to get up there. 
And why is it the top of the fridge gets dirtier than any other surface on, in the yeah, what's house? What's up with that? Every yeah. insect collects there. Every dust yeah, I don't, bunny. I don't know. Mine uh, looks like the uh, like the grill of a, a long haul Mack truck <laughs> that's been on the road for six I months. I got like dead seagulls yeah, up yeah, there. Yeah, got the same. Yeah. Roadkill. <laughs> there's parts. There's hooker parts up there. Ooh, blood. Don't have, don't have hooker parts. <laughs> I shine the uh, purple uh, CSI Woods light oh, up there. Oh, there's there semen, yeah. pentagram, and <laughs> semen up there. I, I injured my retina with that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It's nothing but uh, just uh, just just uh, semen. The pentagram and, and animal of part. semen. Yeah, I hate that. Pentagram of semen. I hate it when that happens. Well, then don't shine the woods no, light up there. No, turn it off. Or, yeah, or just don't invite Adam over. <laughs> right. It's a disaster. Just, you know. Yeah, I don't know. Also, with the refrigerators, the coils, and everything. Refrigerators attract a lot of filth for a place you keep the food. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Meanwhile, you don't hear anything coming out of the blender. It just sits there, just waiting sits to be there used sparkly. respectfully. Plain. Respectfully, not speaking, not speaking until spoken to. Sits next to the toaster, happy. And it's giving you options. What do you want, puree? I'll do it. I'll puree something. I'll blend it. I'll mix it. What do you need? Chop, crush, dice, crush. crush it. I'll do whatever. I'll churn. What is it? Got twenty-eight speeds. What right. do you like? All that was invented by Larry Tate. Every <laughs> no, one of those. Like, that's like, so what? I just don't like that. It's like, well, uh, there's mix, there's blend, there's puree, chop. there's chop. And like any, like any of them have any any significance over? Like <laughs> somehow chop is faster than puree, or right. uh, how does it work? No, nothing happens. You just there's go. No up, it's, just, it's just up the scale. Just mm -hmm, mm -hmm, yeah. If you're mm -hmm, a ten mm -hmm. versus fourteen, it's a totally right. different effect. And, and, and what thing that you put in the blend is just want to hit the ten for immediately? It's, <laughs> all right. Hey, we needed options back in the day. That's all. Bob? Hello. Do you have a, a Germany or Florida? Yeah, I do. Um, I heard in the news, though, Andy Dick made the news. Did you hear that? Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Mm -hmm. There may be a bad joke coming. Somebody die? Is he okay? No, this was, this was in the news. I heard uh, today that last night he was thrown out of a comedy club for exposing himself on stage. Well, that's not the new for Andy, that, though. And yeah, you ask him the, up on stage, that's on, what he's going to do. That's not the Andy I know. Yeah, that's <laughs> tame Andy. That is not the Andy I know. <laughs> I wonder what club. Wow. I have to leave act. at this point. <laughs> it, it was something Berg. The town was something Berg, so it was probably oh, it was a, a city. Town. Yeah. Okay. Well, uh -huh. they didn't realize what anyway, they were Anyway, Germany or Florida. All right. Yeah. Uh, a 38-year-old man was arrested Thursday after running through a, pop a popular amusement park naked, yelling, I am the Pope. I am the Pope. The man was held for 24 hours and then released to the medical facility he had escaped from earlier in the week. Mm. Okay, mm. now tell Angie what this is. Yeah, it's Florida. Oh, oh, oh you know where, 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 where the guy come from? Yeah, I, I'm from Florida. All the whack jobs come right out of Florida. Good Lord, if there's some crazy story to be told, it's happened but in Germany Florida. too, though. Germany's pretty wild. <laughs> but amusement park kind of gives the pope, it away. The Pope. They, they have yeah, the pope. The pope came from Germany and oh, in no. the news. It, it's tough. I know. I... Here's the thing about Germany or Florida, and especially as <laughs> Angie's an ex-Floridian. It's so easy just to think Florida when anything oh, effed yeah. up ever happens it's anywhere so on the planet. But... There are different kinds of effed up because to me, Florida is sort of stupid effed up. It's 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 backing over your girlfriend. <laughs> it's you know just it's just punching out old people it's and more just violent, yeah, meth more labs yeah. exploding and yeah. you know you it's just it's, it's just yeah. super stupid white people just <laughs> having catching on setting themselves on fire. Well, Germany always in the there's, act there's of an intellectual crime. overtone or a cultural overtone. Germany is so European of them. more like. Uh, I put an advertisement in the paper for a male to, to come over and let me eat them. No slice them like a sausage. We sla slice a penis off. Yeah. We sautéed it. You yeah. know, it's it's weird. It's, it's cultural. cultural. Yeah, but here's what it is. It, <laughs> oh, it's, my God. It's more Hannibal Lecter yes. as, opposed, as opposed to just sort of... Billy Bob. Straight Billy Cops. Bob. Cops. Yeah. You got Cops a pretty mouth. Yeah, it's... Yeah, it's it, uh, Florida's Sling Blade. Mm. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, even sling blade, mm -hmm. Mike Taters. Mm -hmm. Mike mm -hmm. Taters. Mm -hmm. And 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 they're they're more Germany's more Hannibal Lecter. Yeah, yeah. But then once in a while you got the Pope in the amusement park, and it's tough. Well, you know, Florida an amusement park in Florida amusement park. Yeah, you're, you're sort of limited to Universal Studios and Disney World in Florida. Mm -hmm. I don't know. You know, mm -hmm. Angie, 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 go with your first impulse, I'm going baby. With Florida. Go with Florida. I'm going Drew. Germany. I'm going Germany too. Uh -oh. That's uh, I'm feeling Germany, Bob. I am the Pope. I am the Pope. <laughs> Hello? Yeah, was you this you Bob? that did this, Bob? Wait. Frankfurt, Germany. You guys... Ah! Yeah. <laughs> 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 <laughs>
Thank you, you forgot Bob. about Bush Gardens. Yeah, Bush Gardens. Yeah. <laughs> All right there, Bob. Okay. All right. Okay. All right, we're gonna uh, we're gonna send you out uh, Wonder Woman's windbreaker, which is the invisible kind. There's nothing. <laughs> you get nothing. And you like it. Must have been a bitch for uh, air traffic controllers. Wonder Woman taxing. You know what I mean? She got that invisible airplane. <laughs> but by the way, you can see her. But you can see her in it. Yeah. yeah. So what good is that? So that doesn't count. More distracting, I would argue, than actual <laughs> aircraft flying over your head is a you know chick in a you know in red a white and blue position. sequence in a seat. <laughs> that would draw more focus. <laughs> Airplanes, you don't even look up. Chick with a uh, golden lasso flying over your head and, a, you know, go-go boots. You, you'd be looking up all day long like, what is this? Waiting for that. Waiting. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Whew. That Wonder Woman was a good, good show coming. Boy, when I was, I was Excellent. just the right age for that when that came out. Well, that's oh, all you had, too. You it is all I raft, had. Raft boxes. All I had. Angie's. Oh, you, uh, had, you had Genie, too. Genie. I dream of Genie. That's yeah. right. Nah, I mean, yeah, but nah, she was a little before my time. But I think oh. I, I caught her in syndication. I did like the idea that she called uh, the guy Master. Yeah, Master, exactly. I like that. I like the fact, uh, I like the super tenuous tie between him being an astronaut and finding a bottle on the beach. Like, <laughs> you can't just find a bottle on the beach. What percentage of people that go to the beach are astronauts? 90%? No, he lost, he was on an island, and, this, and it was, he, his, 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 his space capsule His Gemini went down. capsule came down in the right. wrong place, and he had ah. to, happened to find a capsule on the bottle. Still, she didn't have to actually go to space in order to get the story going. No, you know? it didn't have to be an astronaut. <laughs> no. All right. The point it could is, have been Gilligan. And yeah, then, it could have been a, yeah, like, like, uh, of a boat. Like, uh, he had no sexual attraction to her at all. He's, here's a straight military guy that doesn't want to bang a smoking hot blonde. Who's genie. calling you master? Who's calling you master? He's calling you master, right? Who uh, lives in a upholstered bottle? That's uh, number one. And then also, didn't that you can put the lid on. And didn't close want her, her up. Didn't want her meddling at all. I, if I was an astronaut, I'd be like, "Listen, uh, if if this if one of the O rings starts burning out on, on the Gemini thing, uh, and I'm just going to turn any human torch on the launch pad, you better get involved, bitch. Because the last thing I'd be doing is cursing your name when I'm going up in flames. Like I would want her in there with me. Okay, astronauts like the number one thing you'd want a genie for. You don't need a genie when you you know drive a forklift, but when you're sitting on top of you know f 500 tons of liquid fuel, you you want uh, you want a genie on genie your side. Good. Yeah, all right. Let's take ourselves a little break. <laughs> What's the matter, Michelle? Never really thought about that, but astronaut and genie is good good mix. Yeah, but the guy never <laughs> interested in her. No. No, not Gay. interested. Okay. <laughs> well, That's uh, what I'm screaming. Angie, Who was his partner? What was his partner's name? That well, there was, was the Dr. Was Bellows, after. and then well, there was Dr. the other Bellows, guy. Well, Dr. Bellows, we don't even need to get into. Got to figure out that. They call, they call the other guy by his first name. Yeah. Uh, um, Sergeant Healy. Sergeant Healy. Oh, Captain Healy. Captain Healy. Was Captain Healy. Captain Healy. Yeah, we'll figure it out. Angie's here from The Apprentice. Uh, Drew and my, uh, one of our favorite shows, I must say. Mm -hmm. We will uh, take ourselves a little break. We'll be right back after this. <laughs> Love line. I'm Adam. That's Dr. Drew. Angie's here tonight from The Apprentice. Angie is a uh, old, old friend of mine. Easy. And I'm. Uh, she's not old, but uh, <laughs> I knew her when I was a zygote. Mm. And we. Uh, I am so uh, thick, so dense, so out of it that uh, I've I, I've seen every episode of The Apprentice and had to have somebody tell me that I knew <laughs> one of the one of the It was Audrey more, that told you. Audrey from The Apprentice had right. to tell me that uh, one of the more and Angie before she uh, got the shiv two weeks ago was probably had arguably as much screen time as uh, anybody on that uh, show and I just stared at her and thought hmm. <laughs> see I didn't have a context <laughs> because I didn't think anyone I knew could be on TV unless they're being led to or from the courthouse yeah yeah sure <laughs> I would. Yeah. Every time I see a guy with a jacket over his head being dragged in a courthouse, I think I might know that dude. I probably do, but just owes me money. Being on TV and being a you know, well, here's a successful business person from TV. I would yeah, yeah. immediately think no. But uh, then uh, it was uh, it was uh, brought to my attention. We do know each other, know each other, and now it all comes back into sharp focus. Sam. Yeah. Seventeen. Yeah. Uh -oh. What's up? Uh. Afterwards, having sex with my girlfriend, we realized that the condom has come off and it's been left inside of her. Mm -hmm. That happens. Yeah. Could be some other dudes. 
seven? <laughs> you don't know that. I mean, it's luck on the bright side. You know? Well, he went in with one and came out with that one. Oh, but you know what's worse? Going in with one, coming out with two. That's bad. <laughs> I hate that's, that. That's yeah. bad times. Oof. Or when they're strung together, like that magician thing. You, you just, just pull keep pulling them out. Them out. Oh, that's scarf. bad. That just would, keep doing would, it. Would, well, it. it's kind of, kind of, kind of, scarf, scarf, kind of, 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 kind yeah, you got to go get it, Sam. Did you get it out, Sam? I mean, yeah, yeah, I mean... All right. It, we get it out, but is there any way that... Because I'm sure some semen gets, you know, around that condom that's fallen off, right? Absolutely. Oh. You need... You, that when that's a condom it's, failure, you got to get the morning after pill right away. That, well, is a, that When a condom yeah. fails, that's one of the more common ways it fails. It slips hmm. off. So, A, after you ejaculate, you got to hold onto the base of it and pull the whole thing out. And and B get the right size condom for you. Right. Is, oh, is the slim condom insult. smaller condoms? Is, is that what? Hold on. What is that? I don't know. Drew's uh, allergic Easy. to something. <laughs> is what condom what? Uh, the slim fit condom. I mean, is there? Yeah, they're smaller. Uh, is, is there there are smaller ones. Slim out there. fit. Yeah. Oh, uh, okay. Cool. So get a smaller condom. Yeah, get the slim fit. They have slim fit ones. They must have. A, they know. must have a nice euphemistic name yeah. for that, though. You know what I mean? Oh yes, I'm sure they do. <laughs> they can call it uh, Wee Boy or something like that. They they have to give it some name. You know, you know how, like at Starbucks, everything's a large. Yes, yes. There's right. just there's just large, this, larger this, and larger. This is probably, this is, but since we have Magnum and Magnum XL, probably this would be the Venti. <laughs> right. All I'm saying is, uh, you know, Bean Paul. <laughs> that ain't gonna cut it, right? Piccolo, pencil, pencil. pencil. pencil's Pic not good yeah. either. <laughs> Piccolo just sounds bad too. So that sounds gay and thin. You you went the Piccolo series? <laughs> it's got holes up and down it too. Yeah, got to get that out. And and uh, yeah, you can't leave those in. Does that that's, that happens a fair bit? And toxic the, shock, toxic shock syndrome. If you leave them in. And here's the other thing too. Uh, yeah, that's. That's like dropping a, a semen bomb yeah, in your a woman's water vagina. Balloon. Yeah, what do you mean? Yeah. Did, does it still semen work? Out, yeah. it's, it's open. Yeah. Okay. Mm. Karen, well, wait a yeah. minute, Doctor Drew. Don't, don't the don't the condoms have the gel the in the, oh. the gel in them that kills the semen? The nanoxinol nine. Some of them do, but it's you know you have a big dump like that. It's not going to do uh, very okay. much. You really morning after pills. What you got to do? Know. Karen, yeah, you've had this problem? No, not yet. I don't know many slender, slender gems. <laughs> yeah. Try to steer away from those. Good job. <laughs> Try. Happy birthday. Karen? Hello? You're 25? Yes, I am. Did you just turn 25? <laughs> I'm, well, I'm about to turn 26, actually. Oh, I see. Okay. And you're home studying? No, I'm out at a bar with my boyfriend and his brother who has a girlfriend, and we have a very important question for you. Oh, this is going to be good. Go ahead. Are you ready? Yes. Okay. Hold on. you got to be hot, because only hot chicks ask if you're ready before okay. they start talking, because it's a big deal when they talk. Okay, all right, here we go. <laughs> okay. Are you okay? Are you, are you ready? Are you ready? Okay. Are you okay? Uh, hello? I'm going to talk now. Are you sitting down? You ready? Here it goes. Fat chicks never ask you're ready. They just start talking. <laughs> That's one thing I've learned in life. All right, Karen. Okay. We're ready, baby. Hi. Okay, what, Hi. Is, what is the consequences of having a threesome? Your with, relationship. When, you're, when you are in a committed um, relationship, the girl's into it. She's kind of leery. It's kind of a new territory, never done it before, but interested. Well, clearly in into it, though. Your yeah. relationship will end. Um, Guaranteed. The relationship will end. Guaranteed. Well, wait a second. Who? This is you, your boyfriend, and, and your brother. Your brother's girlfriend? No, 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 no. Okay, I'm sitting <laughs> here at a bar girlfriend. having a conversation with my boyfriend and his brother, who has a girlfriend, mm -hmm. and we're talking about the consequences of having a threesome. Mm -hmm. Your relationship will end, but maybe that's okay. It will end. Mm -hmm. Why you, do you say that? Because I've never seen that not happen when people decide to have a threesome. You've never seen that not happen. Yeah. Even if it's like just casual, you're both are just go, Karen. Just oh. Casual. Karen, go well, ahead. Enjoy. Just being casual. Enjoy, about it, Karen. That's... Yeah, go ahead. Check <laughs> it out. That casual threesome. If you're super intense, it's not. <laughs> hey, Karen. Yes. Are you asking because you're thinking about doing this? Yes. And who's the girl? Um, we don't know. It's just, I mean, there's you know, there's we websites. Knew. Parties coming up this Saturday. Some girls kind of like 
uh, sparked interest or whatever. All right. Something we talked about a long time ago how, that kind of... How long have you been with... All right, let me ask you a question. How long have you been with your boyfriend? Uh, two and a half years. And do you have any kids? No. She's looking at it. Are you planning to get married? Um, possibly in the future. No, no, no. I have college to finish. And no, okay. She's looking to end it. You're she, looking for yeah, an out. Yeah. All right. This will we'll get you out. Go out with a bang. This will do it. Okay. Real quick. Here's how it works, everybody. Um, it's hard to tell which came first, the chicken or the egg. Like, does the threesome destabilize a relationship, or are you on the outs when you decide it's a good idea to have a threesome? I mean, let's look Both at it this way. Happen. Both when things you happen. meet somebody, you're in month number three, you're deeply in love, and you're thinking about marriage. You're not talking threesome no. unless you're colossally effed up. Mm -hmm. Well, but... Mm -hmm. All right, but she's in <laughs> year two and a half. You told me a woman that's 26 albeit she turned it 10 minutes ago, yeah. and has been with someone for two and a half years and has no real plans on getting married to the guy. I'll show you uh, someone who's not that interested and, in the person. And is suddenly interested in all these chaotic yeah, things. Yeah, I, I I'm 26. i got to finish college. Yeah. You should have finished college four years ago, by the way. <laughs> uh, number one. Number two, not into this guy. Two and a half years, you're you're coming up toward 30. You're thinking about marriage. The, free, uh, the threesome will get you out. All right, have the threesome and get on out. Angie Happy here. Happy birthday. Have a good time. <laughs> And Mazel Tov. Enjoy. So I can tell she was Jewish. <laughs> Angie uh, here tonight from The Apprentice. We'll uh, take a quick break. Be right back after this. Hey, everybody. It's Love Line. I'm Adam. That's Dr. Drew. Almost didn't talk there, Drew, because uh, Angie from The Apprentice was taking a test one second before the uh, actual mics got hot. You know my policy. I wouldn't have known what you were doing again. <laughs> you wouldn't have known. You know, she's sitting next to you holding a pen. <laughs> I don't know how you... How I see it, the room is well lit, and she's five Which feet I'm from me. Thinking, I'm she's four about, feet I'm, from me. I'm thinking about the next question. I go listen, listen to start the show. The show. And let me explain. I didn't something. dream of being preoccupied with you sitting You're across from me. Adam. True, focusing on the show. <laughs> That's what I was. I was reading the call. Think of the next call. Let me tell you something. My genius oh, uh, always gets turned against me. No, no, I'm not turning against you. Thank I'm, just, you. I'm, I'm amazed that you can pick these things up. True, focusing on the show. Give me a break. <laughs> Ironically, I'm focusing on the thing you're having our guest do that has nothing to do with the show. Don't give me the focus on the show. Uh -huh. eh? yeah, what? Look, you're lucky this is the first time this has come up. But I told Andrew well before we started yes, he what did. the rules were. Yes, mm -hmm. he did. He does. Just like he's told everybody in the last 300 tests what, what goes on. <laughs> All right. You told him, though, Drew. Which, but I mean, as a doctor, don't you tell your people, don't you tell the people that come in your clinic to stop taking drugs? Well, and then you know, what? Cut them loose. That's all you can here's do. a here's a, a kilo of heroin. Go home. Don't you, take it. You're you're, you're, you're um, how dare you? You're unfairly attacking an old man. As you get older, attentional mechanisms start to wane. Yeah. And you have these hypervigilant attentional mechanisms that you've had your whole life. I would buy that, Mine except for these fading. tests have been going on since you've been in your late twenties. No, I'm just saying the the, <laughs> fa the fading is is the ability to see that when I'm focused here's on the painful things. here's the painful uh, argument that you're now witnessing Angie from The Apprentice <laughs> see the way I smoothly do that lovely Drew and I have been getting Drew has had this test he's been giving to people the guests of this show and it's uh, it's an honor because he put the guests he put the tests away for like uh, three months oh. well, longer than that. although it only feels like five minutes it's been like eight months <laughs> well then it feels like three months there's my point <laughs> the point is he whipped it out for you uh, I think he whipped it out for you because you do a reality show, and uh, I think he has theories about you people. Those I, I not going to share them with you. The, oh, you did. Huh? Well, you, you're going to you're going to you're going to no, dirty the didn't, test. Didn't, he hasn't he hasn't it. shared what his just, theories are. Oh, okay. Well, you just try to guess if they're good. Oh God. All right. No. <laughs> but here's here's the thing. So this has been an ongoing battle around here. And what Drew does is he he takes these tests and he gives it to the guests, and the guests start filling it out because that's what you normally do. And they would normally just fill it out right through the segment one of the show, in which case their sort of head would be buried in this test while I was talking to them. So yeah. I'm, after about a hundred of those, I said, uh, Drew, you got to tell the guest that uh, when the show starts, you got to put the pen down and pay attention. And he would do that. Mm -hmm. But, of course, they wouldn't do that because they would keep the pen in their hand because they were just going and finishing the test. And then the argument began with Drew and I, which I would say, tell We just had. What we just had, which is you can't see they're, they're holding a pen. And Drew would just say, no, <laughs> cannot. And then I He's would focusing argue. focusing on the show. You want them to finish the test so you choose 
to ignore it. And Drew would say, no, I physically don't see it. And in which case, I would say, give me your car keys because you can't drive home. Maybe my, maybe I, it's, I, next time next time I have somebody do it, let me switch chairs with you now, and see if it's it, it, zero to do with that. I, it may. No, what it is is I'm looking out for it, and you're not looking out That's for exactly it. That's exactly what it is. It's exactly what it is. It's your pet peeve. It's my pet and it peeve. it doesn't bother him. Well, here's, so you're watching. It, it, there's nothing in it for Drew for you to put your pen down. True. The idea of no, somebody. There, there's, there's no, there immense, is. There is. There's a whole, the whole. I don't want this argument. to happen. It's immense. But yeah. if it was immense, if it's immense, then you have then then you got to go get it like an EKG or something. Because if it's an immense, and we've had this conversation twenty eight times, you, you immense doesn't register in your brain at all. Yeah, it, it can't be a match. Now we should point out also that the pen was down before the show started. The pen was down. <laughs> yes, the pen was down. Absolutely. Pen was down, but didn't register to Drew one well, way. I want to try other. it sometime when I'm changing. Just to, you know, you got to let me experiment with this. Let me try changing seats. Right. Time I give, we'll see what happens. Well, look, I don't want to put the uh, therapist on the sofa, but <laughs> it can't be immensely important to you that they put the pen down. It is immensely important. This is one of the most unpleasant things I ever go through is this, as a matter of fact. Right, but then you have to ask and yourself, why do you repeat it? Why do you Why do you get into it? This is the point, that I've got to find a way that I can get this into my visual field or something. It's so not it visual. Register. It's not a visual thing, though. Or keep it on my you know, on my radar but screen. Let, some, let's, somehow let, that, let's look at it this way, Drew. Let's, yeah. let's forget this. Let's just bring up any other, any other scenario where it's immensely important that... Mm -hmm. B doesn't happen or this outcome doesn't happen. Right. You would make sure that didn't happen. You would. Yes? No? I would certainly try. I no, no, you know what I'm talking about, yeah, though, no, right? Talking about if it was another scenario, if it had to do with your kids or something, and there was something sharp or something, and it's like every time I turn my back, they get on to this thing, you know? You would work it out. I'd figure something out. I'd you would figure it out. I'd position or something. I'd no. find some way to, that it would stay you, but in But you don't my... have to change position. You're only four feet I'm from the person. I'm just saying I would start working on things <laughs> that would get it in my visual field so I'd be aware of it. That's yeah. the point. So I could so Not I could the visual on. field part, Whatever though. it is, I would start whatever working it on is. finding things that would, you know, whether it's repositioning myself mm -hmm. or whatever it is. Let's reposition. I know you're, you're working on the reposition part. Drew, uh, one could argue you have a better shot at Angie visually than I do. Uh, but it's not working. So I'd like to uh, change it and try uh, something it's different. Not a visual Drew's a married thing. man. Can't we you get back to the man bridge it. part of the show where See, everyone was Drew, happy now you've in turned love. into something mechanical where you can't physically would, see would, her from where you're at. Are you Maybe it's a tying, a, tying a thing around my Somebody's finger, whatever it is. Tying a thing around your finger. Yeah, do something like that. But I'm saying if it's if it's something you're you're desperately uh, trying to avoid. That's the kind of thing I need to do. It's something I need to find but some I'm mechanism. I'm saying you would have done it. Yeah? I'm going to do it. <laughs> that we st I stopped doing the test to avoid this. Oh, please. You did, did 272 <laughs> tests We're before you doing stopped. a lot more. This well, is too painful. It's too painful. Just tell the person to stop writing when we come back from the commercial. It's all you have to do. You have to watch them. You know what they do. True. Too pain. This is too painful? This is awful. Yeah. This is awful. This is awful. But yes. you know how to avoid it. That's right. I'm trying to do that. You're trying to do it. The accusation is there's something. I'd rather go through this. No, I'm, I'm going to make two accusations. I make two accusations. Mm -hmm. One is is that it's so important to you that they finish this test on some level, some sort of crazy thing no, that it just I'm, transcends. That's ridiculous. I don't, that's ridiculous. That, that one doesn't matter. It that, doesn't that, matter that, that, that they really finish the test. That's, that's but you, the idea of somebody going halfway into a test and then putting a pen down, that doesn't strike you as uncomfortable? Not at all. Not at all? Doesn't. It doesn't. Not at all. Doesn't. So you have no real vested interest in them working. No, I like them to finish it, but not, not compared to the misery. Uh, it doesn't even register compared to how miserable it is. All right, well, then, then number two, is there some, some part of you that wants to go through this ordeal on a constant basis? No, it's, it's that when I start out, it's a memory thing. I yeah. have to remember that this is what's coming if I don't pay extra careful attention to what what they're doing. Yeah. My thing is, I kind of make assumptions that they won't pick the pen right, up. Right, but won't after do the things. first ten times, you would think. You would I, think. So I've got to find some mechanism that helps me do that. You could look so, at them before we go to the. It's not that not doesn't work. work. That doesn't work. All right. So I got to find some else. All right. All right, but you hear your argument, right? I need to find this. Obviously, isn't working. I need to find something else. Uh huh? That's all. Uh huh? Yeah. But I, I did put the pen down before the show started. That's true. You know, you, <laughs> by the way, the directions. and I made a note, you're the one of the few people that actually followed Drew's direction. And you took it right up to the point, right up to the last <laughs> second, 
right? It was, uh, it's showtime. Boom, the pen just dropped a millisecond before the mic seated up. I'll give you that. Drew was oblivious. That's that why got I brought you going, that though. up. <laughs> yes. I was oblivious to what you were talking Jessica? Hi. You're 19. I mean, it'd be easier for me to say, oh, I was all over it. I knew she was going to stop. I was oblivious. Well, no, I know. Yeah. I know you wouldn't try that argument because yeah. I could tell you weren't, you weren't paying attention to her. Not to that. Mm -mm. No, I know, but Drew, but you ever think about this? I'm going to have to find a way to make sure that that works, that I do that. But I'm, it not, it's not a physical thing is what I'm it's saying. A, it's a memory. It's an attentional problem and a memory problem. It would be like, think about the things in your life that are important to you. Think about how good you are at those things. You know what I do? I, because you that, make them happen because they're important. I write to you. them down. You do whatever you have find, to do. Right, I find them. You do whatever you have to do. That's You've probably. never done that with this. Mm -hmm. That's all do. I'm saying. Not important. You know, important. Just don't treat it like other things are important in your life. Because true, no one's better at taking care of that stuff than you. That's what I'm saying. That's what I, and, I, and I thought I'd done it by making a big point about it and stuff and talking to her about right, it. Right, but that's, that's never worked. No, that usually was working for a while there, but it's been. Mm -hmm. It's not working. It's not working perfectly. Right. I'm I've paying you a compliment by saying you're good at stuff. Your problem is you are good at stuff you want to be good at, and I'm saying this ain't one something you want to be good no, at. Otherwise, you'd be good at it. Why? Would, so that I want to go through this. That's the How, question. That's the question. I, this is some. There's something pleasurable about this. I enjoy this. You have to agree with me, Drew, that there's almost nobody better at taking care of business than you when it's something that's in your radar field that you want to take care of. Yes. That I find ways, yes, find ways to, and that's what I'm going to do here, find okay. a way. All right, all right, well, we'll keep searching. It's going to be difficult. <laughs> Evidently. Here's a way you could look at them before. We'll get through that's, That them. won't work. Not going to work. work. All right. That, that's what I've tried, and that's not working. All right. I, I'm almost finished with the test, too. <laughs> I prefer to so keep going now. Next commercial break. <laughs> It'll be done. Jessica? Yes. You're 19? Yes. What's up? Okay, I have a question. Um... I have a canker sore on my mouth, and I gave my boyfriend oral sex for, like, five seconds, maybe. And I was wondering what the chances are of giving him herpes. We'll see. There's no way to give you a number on that. That could be a herpetic lesion, and if that is, you'll transmit herpes. It, yeah, but it's, can you go from the mouth to the genitals? Yes, routinely. Routinely? Yes, very easily. Didn't we? Use, but you can't go from the genital to the mouth? No, you can well, didn't we used to think they didn't work as well at, that at way? At one time, there was that thinking, but it does not. That is not the case. That type one and type two occur equally in both places. There was oh, there was, there was no contact. It didn't touch the um, canker but it, sore. But it touched your mouth. Right. That could be enough. Well, when we'll did see. this when we'll did see. this happen? It's been that way for years. Uh, years? Do yeah. we used to talk on the show that uh, look, you got something on your thing. It's not going to go that way, and that one's not going to go this way. No, no, no. Hmm. I thought we used to have that. That used to be a discussion. Maybe years and years ago, but not not in the last six or seven years. Well, you know, actually, I haven't been discussing it that much yeah. to tell you the truth over the last like five years. Yeah. I don't know what the hell happened to herpes. It's gone, it's, uh, gone the way of the flapper and the dodo. The dodo. But <laughs> what the hell happened to herpes? They got to get a new publicist. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's it's finally become what it actually always was—a skin problem. Yeah, not this horrible. Uh, this is red scarlet letter. It really was. Huh, it really was the uh, you know venereal disease du jour a few yeah. years back. Uh -huh. They had a good publicist or something. Well, it was herpes. Uh, X was uh, mm -hmm. all over the place. There's lots of robo tripping going on. Well, that's all that stuff. The scene. These kids have seen the damage that does, and that's the, when when they perceive the harm. That's when they stop doing these things, and so they're seeing that finally. All right. So and they're probably also seeing the herpes isn't, isn't that big a deal, so it's not such a huge issue for people. Is there is there no difference between genital herpes and oral herpes anymore, then? For, for the most part. And uh, genital to mouth, mouth to genital, same. doesn't, same, doesn't same root, doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. All right. Well. And, and so any canker, but not any canker sores. Potentially, hurt. potentially any canker sores, but not necessarily. Because there's... So be careful, you canker sores. Thank God I never... I don't. Because there's like herpes simplex 1 never. and simplex 2, and then there's cold sores? Or what, what is that? How does that there's work? There's herpes type viruses or other kinds of herpes viruses other than herpes simplex that causes a uh, cold sores. Kid who got a cold sore, yeah. what would that be? It could be herpes. It could but be simplex. what would it most likely Some be? Some other kind of... Yeah. Okay. All right. So uh, now what's Jessica got to do? Nothing? Wait it out. We'll see. When you, if something made the move within a couple within weeks, two weeks, she'll have he'll have something. Okay. Jessica. Yeah. All right. Well, there you go. Thank you. 
You have a nice two weeks. And uh, <laughs> keep an eye on that guy's penis. Okay. All right there, uh, baby girl. You doing okay? Yeah, I'm a little worried. Okay. How's junior college treating you? <laughs> Dropped out. Oh, wow. Junior college. No, listen, I respect that. What yeah. are you doing? I'm going to go to massage therapy school. That's uh, good. Yeah. It's, it's good things. Good tips. Mm-hmm. Okay, good. And you know what? You don't talk much, and that's good. <laughs> Once in a while, you get one of those crazy jabbery chicks on you. Chewing gum, popping that gum, Jeez. talking. My boyfriend moved to Fresno, but I'm still in the Bay Area myself. <laughs> I'm never afraid. I'm going to say, because I'm a San Francisco girl. And they start doing stuff. Ooh, you store tension in your back, don't you? No, no, I do it. My left heel. Actually, I, I have a crescent wrench. I store it in it. <laughs> at home. Yeah, my back. Smart. Yeah, you store a lot of... You have tension. You store a lot of... Yeah. Oh, really? Uh, I usually store it in my right eyelid. I'm surprised that you can feel some tension in my, my back. back. And my they love novel. to talk. Oh, this is... Oh, oh, oh. They're not a... Oh, you're, you're, uh, you're left-handed, aren't you? <laughs> there are, it's the same weird... It's a weird, flighty, weird group. Yeah. I don't know what that group is, but it's a weirdo group. But look. Everyone, you should do that. I mean, uh, instead of just going at, putzing around junior college for four years and ending up with nothing, just go to that massage therapy school. Go there for six months. You start making some money, get a gig, get some nice tips. You're going to do something. Harold? Yes, sir. Yeah. What's happening? Well, uh, you know, same thing. Well, that's they that. Just drop the S-bomb? S-bomb, yep. There you go. Yeah. Bye-bye, Harold. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye-bye now. You store tension in your hair. <laughs> <laughs> Veronica? Yeah. You 23? Yep. What's up? Um, I'm, like, becoming very sexually frustrated, and I can't figure out why. Mm hmm Like, when I have sex with my boyfriend, it's not fun for me anymore. Like, no, you're I, not into him anymore. Mm -mm. It's over. <laughs> mm -mm. But... Like, all my friends are, like, at their, like, they love it. And I like sex. I can't get enough, but I'm just, I don't enjoy it as much. Well, anymore. you have two two possibilities. Either you're done with your boyfriend, and mm -hmm. your, your body's telling you that, uh -huh. or you were sexually abused, and you're now going in this bipolar phase of sexuality mm. from being hypersexual to being shut down sexually. So which is it? Well, I have, I mean, or I have something else something. on the side, but I still don't like yeah. it. Uh oh, now we're going to beers. <laughs> I store stress in my semen. <laughs> That'd be great. <sighs> That's better. Get, get rid of yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> Where's your stress? In the gym sock? <laughs> Technically in the hamper, but I mean, yeah. Um, Veronica? Uh huh. What, what happened to you? Oh, baby. You don't know what goes on. <laughs> What the, imagine all the masturbation going on on that uh, apprentice suite. Oh, 22-year-old guys, uh, businessmen, movers and shakers, hustlers under stress. Oh. <laughs> you no just tell. Every night is like, Chris, we need to get, I'm in the shower! <laughs> don't come in, I don't come in! There must have, been, must have been wax central in there. You girls all parading around in towels. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. The lawyer guy with the bow tie. He was probably... Bren. <laughs> Bren. Bren, the decorator. <laughs> Three, four times a day. That's why he was late picking up those sandwiches on that right. one task. Yeah. Hey, uh, Veronica? Uh-huh. All right. So were you sexually abused? Mm, yeah. All right. Well, All right. You go. Well, what's up? What, who did this to you? Um... I had an older brother. Yeah. Yeesh. What like happened to him? Brother, or no, half-brother. Uh, was your mm. half-brother. Mm. So. Same mom? Huh? Same mom? No, different mom. Same dad. Mm hmm Different moms. And he stayed. Ooh. <laughs> Imagine that story. Dear, oh. Yeah. yeah. That's bad. Oh. So his biological mom must have been just a full-blown mess. <laughs> Yeah, hey, Veronica. Not it's not none of this is funny, right? Veronica, what do you you got some junior college in your future too? Oh no, no way. <laughs> yeah. What's up with you? What are you thinking about doing? Porn or what are you doing? <laughs> I don't know. I've my my friends. We've made videos, but. <laughs> hey, hey, Veronica. So far, nothing we've been talking about is funny here as it pertains to you. 
I thought, I thought my storing you're, you're stress funny. and you're the semen was She's not funny. Her story is not funny. Jim Sock was funny. This is so, a mess. It's a good line. This, yeah. this is a disaster. Veronica, what's, what are you doing? Are you living at home? Yeah, I moved back in with my mom. Mm -mm. Move back in. Always a bad sign. Mm -hmm. Why? What happened? Because, um, well, my current boyfriend, which is going to be my ex soon, I'm just not having it with him anymore. So. Oh, you, you were living with him? Yeah. Do you, do you have, what do you do? Do you work? I go to school full time. All right. Drunk. Now we're back. We're getting back to junior college? Yeah. Hold okay. on. Okay. Shock. Ah, so, so shock. We're by this. Even the, the caliber of student that goes into the, at the junior college level. Do you hear these people, America? How dare you argue with me about making fun of the education that people get over at junior college? Do you hear what you're dealing with? I, here's the whole thing. Uh, I only say stupid when I hear junior college. If I don't hear anything, I just say forklift. Do you understand you're below average people? Think about that concept, Drew. A, a, a institution of learning that actually has people that are sort of intellectually subpar to just the general populace. Right. That's, oh, there's some, oh, some education going on there. Please. Veronica, Veronica full time. Are you in a nursing program? No way. Yeah, I'm going to go into it. <laughs> going to go. Not You're going to go into it? Yeah. When do you, when do you go into it? Um, I have to finish a couple more classes and then I'm right. going to go into it. Engi uh, Engineer Chris says that you finish a couple classes, celebrate his 30th birthday, and then he's going into the nursing program at the junior college, too. That's what, good. Uh, what drugs are you doing, Veronica? Uh-huh. What drugs are you doing? What way? Drugs. What, um, I used to do um, speed, and I drink oh. a lot, but... I can, All right. I can hear it. Drew gets that. So, it. Veronica, this is a disaster. Why don't, why don't you focus on recovery? Then that's probably your best bet for. Well, I've uh, been clean for. No, I don't mean just not you. You're drinking, though, uh, right? Yeah, I mean, get into a program, a 12-step program, get a sponsor, <laughs> start working on yourself a little bit. The, the, Work you, the steps. Yeah, you've got you've got a mess going on here, and the, the, there's so much going on that I, I'd rather see you focus on a program of recovery. That that's the way you're going well, to sort something. Well, I don't drink that much. I only Veronica, drink listen, just life. listen to what I'm telling you. D you know, do whatever you want. Why'd you call then? But I, I'm just saying, if you want to get better from this mess you're in... True, she's horny. That's Leave her alone. That's a reasonable way <laughs> to do it. Girl can't be horny? Yeah. See, you try to shut a woman down sexually because you're intimidated you by their sexuality. Judge. You can't judge. I'm so the you're man. the man. I'm the you're man. the man. You're intimidated by their sexuality. So I'm this trying girl, to keep it down. This girl's free, man. She's trying to express herself. <laughs> but you're intimidated by that because you're a man. You can't dumb handle man. a woman who thinks man. freely. Not like that, I'm dumb man. You're, you're a man true. and the man. <laughs> You're like the guy, you're like Neil Armstrong. It's your one small step for the man and one, one giant leap for the man, man. <laughs> Veronica? Yeah. All right, baby doll. We'd like to see you have some sort of future, and especially I'd uh, like to see you not have any kids. Do you have any kids? No. Really? And if you're going to go into nursing, you're going to have to do something about your addiction. Ooh, ooh. Is something wrong with your tubes or something? No, I just, I'm not ready for it. Good. I'm use careful. Do you use birth? Careful? Depo like, Rivera. Like when, when I hear careful, I picture people dodging semen. <laughs> no, you know I'm what not I mean? Like it's, a, like, you know, it's like, like, like it's a yeah. paintball game. Yeah. Dodgeball. Yeah. Right. yeah. <laughs> you, you, you're on birth control? Yeah. I was taking the pill, but I'm going to switch to the patch now. So. Okay. Yeah, All right. We don't, uh, this guy you're bored of, fine. Break up with him. And the guy on the Focus side. on your sobriety. Mm -hmm. Get a little therapy. Well, I think 12 step for a therapy. 12 will step. Not work. Okay, don't have any kids. Oh, no. And uh, get into that nursing program. Oh, I am. But I just don't, I, I can't, like, deal. Like, for me, when I used to have sex, it used to relieve me stressfully. Like, yeah. stress. And now I, I, it's just like building up more and more, and I can't deal with it anymore. All right. Well, that means you need, uh, need to get some help, some work now. Try something different. We think you need a, a new position we're going to suggest to you. I don't know. All right, here's I've my position. everything. Lay down on the th therapist's sofa. She won't, she won't do All right. All right. Go like to the go front. Front. I, I don't even know. I, but by the way, wait, wait, just, why don't you just go uh, talk to a pelican? I know. She said a pelican would listen more. I would like to get a pelican. 
Prius <laughs> Prius with or pro food pterodactyl legs. A pod of pelicans. <laughs> I would like to get, here's what I like to do. I like to get some uh, unevenly shaped pylons, pure pylons. I was yeah. going to lash them together yeah. with rope. And I would chain a pelican to, oh, nice. to it. And it would just sit there. And, and I would, happily. I would call it rusty. <laughs> and I would have a uh, bucket of chovy. You know it as anchovy. And I would throw it to the pelican, and it would kind of just gobble it mm -hmm. and do it. And once in a while, I would do that move with its uh, wings where it looked like it wanted to fly but decided not to it at the end. stretch them back and then bring them forward. Yeah, and that weird thing that birds do when they got that chain on their foot. <laughs> looks like they're kind of moving. Is, is anybody no. else as, as pained by Veronica as I am? It's yes. like talking to a, a, mm -hmm. a piece of wood. Well, not only mm -hmm. that, but she's she's 23, and I see her future. It's bad, yeah. It's just, it's just you know, rehab and drugs and whatever, prison po possibly, yeah. and crapping out a few kids. Kids and a couple of abusive Her relationships. Not going to have any future at all. I mean, that's going to be a disaster. Now, on the other hand, valedictorian of the uh, junior college class she's in. So she that's should. the good news. She made the dean's list. Uh, maybe she heard you. She might have heard you. Yeah, we'll see. All right, let's uh, take ourselves a little break. No, I, don't, I think she's drunk. I know. Angie. <laughs> Maybe her friends will tell her that they heard her <laughs> An intervention. <laughs> oh, that'd be good. Mm. Angie's uh, here tonight from The Apprentice, Thursday nights, NBC. Going to be watching tomorrow night. We'll take ourselves a quick break. We'll be right back after this. Yeah. Ready? Woo! Uh. Woo! Uh. Uh. Woo! Yeah! Ready? Woo! Uh. Yeah! Uh. What's up, everybody? Yeah. I'm Adam. That's Dr. Drew. Angie is uh, here tonight. Yay. Angie's from The Apprentice. Favorite Apprentice. That is uh, one of uh, mine, Drew's, uh, me and Drew's, me Drew and Drew's, Drew's and I's <laughs> favorite shows. Thursday nights, 9 o'clock on NBC. Be watching uh, tomorrow night. Angie, who do you, oh, you know. You no, know I don't things? know. It's oh, down to two. Oh, because it's down to two. We go back for the finale. Uh, right. May, may you can't, to. obviously you can't tell us who the two are. No, then I'd have to kill you. What uh, what vote? about what happens in the finale? How do you do, do, get Trump, between the two? He, Trump picks. He just picks one. Uh, the last task has already been performed. And oh, it he has. Goes in and, and picks. Oh, Slide they already did it. the last task. Yes, yes oh. they did. Mm, you know what that is? Yes, I do. Why do you know that? She was in New York when it happened. Yeah. Yeah, I but was there. but you were off the show. Right. Before the last task was yes. performed, and you were out of the suite. No, but they keep, they keep them secluded as long as the show's filming. No, I know yeah, they there's keep... another, there's another, you Area. know, the Ponderosa, they call it the Ponderosa, and that's where the reality show should be. <laughs> right. Well, like Todd, the first guy who got fired, you know, spent three months drinking with hookers right. and, <laughs> and there's a whole there's a whole story right. what happened oh, I well, don't know. what do you want so they wild, drank with hookers wild. what do you mean what happened all kinds of things happen back but, but here's Rosa. here's my uh, I'm not trying to be uh, condescending in any way but why do they let the people that are at the Ponderosa know what the last task no, no, was no no what happens is is that when people get fired and come back to the come to the Ponderosa they tell you, they tell you what happened I, I and know, then at the last task that's what I'm asking uh, you people, all show up. people are pulled. You know, they, there's three or four from each team. Oh, oh, that's they bring right. them back to yeah. perform. That's right. So the two people will have a team, and so then you hear. You know, you kind of right. know what happened. Can you tell us whether you were pulled for the last task? I can't tell can't you tell that. Us oh really? <laughs> I thought they pulled everybody. Uh, sometimes, I, sometimes they do. Sometimes they do. Well, I'm trying to think of. Uh, no, they don't do. They can't do everybody because they start with like 16 people. Right? 18, yeah. 18 people. No, they don't, but they don't, they don't, they don't need them. There's not nine and nine. There's usually like four and four or something, something like, like that. that. Yeah. So I thought they just chose from like what Survivor does, which is the ones that were booted off most recently mm -hmm. make the tribal mm -hmm. council. It mm -hmm. seems like Angie being a strong performer and being one of the later ones uh, to get the finger would most assuredly be <laughs> one, part of that one. But maybe you can dip, dip deep and uh, take somebody who got booted earlier. Joanna? Hello? You're 21? Yeah. What's up? Uh, well, about two years ago, I had a baby, and um, I'm married and everything, but my sex life just went to shock. <laughs> because you have no drive anymore? Um, at all. Like, I, I get into the mood, like, maybe once, twice a month, but... That's it. Like I'm just. Is is it the stress of raising a baby, or is it the reality of the biological changes that have occurred? Um, maybe 
the stress, but it's not really that stressful because she's like running has around any, has and everything. Has anything changed in your relationship with your husband? Mm, not really. Okay, so have you talked to your doctor about this? Uh, no, I haven't really gone to the doctor after I had it. Right. Like, are you on? Are you on any medication? No. Are you still breastfeeding? No. All right, go back to the doctor. Sometimes getting on a birth control pill will get things kick-started again. What else? How about kick-starting yourself to kick-start yourself? It, it's hard because it's... Sure, she's gone. Because I was on the pill, but uh, I got off of it because it just made things worse. Mm. Well, maybe a different pill. What's uh, what's your husband? Is he, is he uh, excited? Is he ready to go? Oh, yeah, all the time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, these things always get worse because whoever the partner is, whichever direction you're going, whether you're the one that doesn't want to have sex or the one that does want to have sex, they both seem to go further in that direction. Right. It's well, Obviously, the, you can do the horny math, but for some reason, the ones that are shutting down, the hornier the person gets, the more pressure they feel. The more shut down they get. And uh, you, uh, you spiral. This is uh, one of them negative spirals. Hey, uh, jo Joanna? Huh? I'm going to go with Drew on this. Maybe a new pill, but... Did you try this with your doctor, or was this just birth control because you didn't want to get pregnant again? Because I didn't want to get pregnant again. Yeah, you got to talk to your doctor about things you can use that might restore your biology, your, your hormones, so you can have a sex drive again. Yeah, because if, if, this, if you don't have a beef with your husband, and then not, this is a hormonal And you're thing, not probably. depressed, you're not having a postpartum depression. Are you depressed? Um... Sometimes I feel a little depressed, but it doesn't really have anything to do with the baby. Right, and it's not what's shutting her down completely. I don't All think. right, just general stuff. Yeah, so well, get in there. What's your husband do? He's a musician. Uh oh, is he gone all the time? Oh, um, he's gone on the weekends, but not mm. like, during the week or anything. Uh, I'm not making a. Uh... I'm 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 not making a ranchero uh, music. Yeah. yeah, does he play the giant guitar? <laughs> no, he <doesn't. laughs> is this him? Plays the accordion. <laughs> well, there's eight guys who play the accordion. That's what I'm saying. There's lots of jobs. <laughs> Those are in quartets. So I don't know. Do you, I don't know how the math works out. Uh, yeah, that's uh, in a uh, yeah in a four man ranchero band. There's only nine accordion players. <laughs> that's basically how it works. <laughs> they. <laughs> I don't know how. I'm not sure the math works. I was actually watching uh, 60 Minutes at two tonight, and they did this story on the illegals coming in from uh, you know into Arizona, and they visited one of these like ranchero bars in some oh, town wow. in Nebraska, and there was that crap blaring in the background. <laughs> Even dur during the undercover investigation, still so distracting, I could barely watch it. Like just so painfully bad. Can somebody pipe some classical music into that country so we can get them on their feet? Uh, Look, here's the deal. I, I like to do a test. Here, here's the test. Here, I'll do this. You sit down at the drafting table, see if you can design a rocket. <laughs> With this With this on? blaring in the background. <laughs> I bet you end up doodling a half track. <laughs> here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to sit I got a nice clean sheet of paper. I'm going to revolutionize commercial air air flights. I, this plane is going to be it's going to be hypersonic. Fuel hypersonic. It's going to be four or five times the and speed of sound. And headed to Carry 350 people. <laughs> it's going to fly. To, uh, it's going to fly to stratosphere. Oh hell, let's get loaded. <laughs> Tequila. That's what this music everyone. does. Yes, you want to know why you don't have a space program? This music. Everything can be everything can be traced back to this. Now, you pump a little Wagner in, now you got a space program. <laughs> that, that's how it works. Drew, what are you doing this? You can't, you could build a washing machine to this music. I can't talk. <laughs> it's stifling. <laughs> it's starting to grow on me a little bit, actually. You, if you pulled out a, a draft, if you set a drafting table and you pulled out a mechanical pencil and this music came out, you'd stab yourself in the ear with it <laughs> and fall over. That's how it works. Okay, I'm just saying, there's a connection between uh, thinking and classical music. Yeah. Well, we're going to share when... Not thinking. No. Not thinking. Getting loaded. All right. Here we go. Let's be honest. Anthony? Yes. 29? Yes, I am. What's up, brother man? Man, you are a god to me. If I really? didn't have you, I wouldn't be where I am today. Where are you? <laughs> Prison? Junior college? <laughs> oh. No, no. I quit oh. junior college. Ooh. I decided to get into a business, and 
last year I made six figures. Wow. wow. Excellent. Wow. The now year, how did the year, year before yes. that I made fifteen thousand dollars. So you are my role model, you terrible. are my God, whatever Thank you want you. to call it. Tell me tell me how I touched your life, Anthony. <laughs> you you taught me to be the right way. You taught mm. me the right way to go in life. Mm. What did why? What did you what did you hear me talk about? How did I convince you to drop out of junior college? <laughs> Well, everybody quits junior college, and it's it's worthless. Yeah. And you, and I can't even believe that I'm talking to you right now. I mean, you are like the the man. I can't. I can't believe I'm inside of me. <laughs> and talking. I can't believe and that talking. I'm talking. Hold on. Me, 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 me. Who's? That's me. You don't think it's a thrill for me to be around me? It's just as thrilling for me to be around me as it is for you to be around me. You know I can't I mean? believe it. I and can't me. believe it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I wake up every morning, I look in the mirror, and I go, my God, it's me. I'm thrilled. I love me. Anthony. I love me some me. All right. So what, what business did you get into? Insurance. Insurance. Yeah. And uh, now you're making six figures, and you have the uh, world by the tail. I am trying to, yes. Yes. I'm trying to make seven figures, and, but, and I, it, I wouldn't even be at anything if it weren't for you though well why but you know you say that i know i'm fishing for compliments but all i told you to do is drop out of junior college and i did and, and that's I, and that's I, just, I, I listened to you and you have made me realize the simplicities of life <laughs> mm. all right well let's go over a few of those beats since uh you've gotten us started let's talk about them because angie's a successful person drew is uh successful Although, as parents are still a little disappointed, I'm, of course, literally a millionaire, literally. Uh, I, I, uh, let's, let's give our basic beats here. I, well, my, my feeling is, is you don't get rewarded for being good at a whole bunch of things. Mm. You, you should really pick out what you want to do mm. and get really good at it and, and get, make, make money. And then you can pay other people to do your taxes, fix your car, Clean your put house. a new roof on your house. You know, if you take a look at almost anybody... Uh, I don't care if they're a performer or CEO of a company. They're probably pretty good at one thing, and they're probably woefully bad at a lot of uh, a lot of things. But, although they're efficient people, but people that are, are good also tend to know a lot about a lot of things. Yes, they don't necessarily get good, but they tend to pay attention and learn and be interested, engaged. Yeah, yeah. Now I'm I'm with you on that. I, all I'm saying is is there's a lot of people that uh, wow they could start a fire if they were stranded on an island. They can fix their own car. They can put their own roof on. They can do their own taxes. Unnecessary. Society doesn't really reward yeah. you. Yeah. You're much better off picking one thing you're strong mm -hmm. at, being really good at it, and being being better, and, and uh, sizing up the competition in whatever field you're in and, and just beating them at that. The uh, the other thing, and I'm trying to think of, uh, and you guys jump in. Tell me uh, what you think about uh, keys to uh, keys to success. Drew, what do you have over there? See, I'm Drew's got nothing. No, I'm just in the education <laughs> thing. I, th I think. Yeah, but but that doesn't seem to necessarily equate. Uh, here's the deal. Whatever whatever you do, if you're going to be successful, you're going to work your ass off. Yeah, exactly. That's what I was going to say. Right. So so hard work. Okay. Oh, here's hard the work. delayed Definitely gratification. That's what I wanted to touch on, which is you have to give away stuff every once in a while. I have to do stuff for free. Pro bono. Mm -hmm. A little pro bono work in there. When I got started in radio, uh, K-Rock, imagine that, wasn't paying much. Actually, they weren't paying anything. I did it for 10 years for free. Well, that now you're an idiot. It's crazy. Yeah. That's, that's <laughs> now you've crossed the, the line. Yeah. I did it for six months. I felt I, like I got ripped off. <laughs> I did it for six months for free. I, and, and, then, and then when they finally decided to pay me, it was like 50 bucks a pop. Right. And everyone said, what the hell is... They, I remember they said, what, why? That's nothing. Go in there and demand more. And I just said, I should be paying them. Mm -hmm. Because uh, I'll just use this as a platform. And I'll make money down the road. They'll, they'll be payday down the road. I don't. There's no difference between fifty bucks a pop, eighty bucks a pop, or hundred and five. It's all chump change. Let's get to the real money, and let's just not piss anyone off along the way. And that's uh, that's one thing. Successful people always eat it for a few years. Whether mm -hmm. it's what hey, Drew goes to college for thirty years. You don't get paid to go to college. Other people, apprentice, right? Apprentice. For, for for years. You 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 have to be 
you have you, you can't look for the quick payday. You have to you have to eat it for a couple of years, whatever many it is. Years very often. Sometimes many years, uh, whether it's a, a a program or whether it's a, you're going to a specific school which, or trying to get which certified. Which is why you got to kind of like what you're doing, right? See, and my thing is, I started the you know the curves for women out here. I opened the first one out here, and I the women's, loved women's only gym. Women's only gym. Yeah. I loved um, supporting and empowering women and helping women and all that. And now I've done that. I have two of them, very successfully have accomplished that, and I kind of want to move on. My thing is, I get a little bored with this, and then I want to do that. I think I'm a little ADD adult ADD thing. But I've also accomplished that goal, successful. Now I want to do something else. Mm -hmm. Sell the businesses, do another business, yeah. do something else. Well, there's another, uh, as long as we're, you know, just everyone's just having an ass kiss uh, <laughs> circle, <laughs> ring of ass kissing. But the successful people are also successful at whatever they decide to be successful at. And that's the other thing you have to learn. They just stop some, something and focus on something else. They have laser-like focus. But is, it is what Dr. Drew said, too. It's hard work. I the, worked my <clears throat> but here's, butt off. Oh, you worked your butt off. And, and people that aren't successful burn as many calories. It's just what they do is they go in one direction. They go for a couple of, couple of years. They mm -hmm. stop and change directions. Mm -hmm. They stop and change directions. They do a lot of direction changing. And they never follow through. They never finish up. They're just this close to finishing that education. They're this close to finishing that program or becoming successful in the business. And they stop right at the end. That's, uh, that's bad times, too. Pick something. Pick something Insurance. you like. Work hard on it. Don't be scared to do it for free also, for a while. Also, I think finally, uh, be, uh, be realistic about your self-assessment. Oh, yes. Yeah. Oh. I know we got to go to break, but I, <laughs> I was out talking to people when I was uh, doing this uh, thing in Florida a few weeks back. And everyone I talked to is like, what do you want to do? I want to be a rap star. I want to be an actress. Right. I want to be a model. It's mm -hmm. like, uh, look, everybody. There's a handful of those jobs open. Let's let's pick something that you're going to do, not that you want to do. All right. We'll uh, take ourselves a break. We'll be right back after this. Yeah. Love line. I'm Adam. That's Dr. Drew. Angie's here tonight from uh, The Apprentice. Thursday night. So I'm to see. Hey. Let me uh, say one more thing. Just we're leaving off on our uh, keys to success. <laughs> Certain people are uh, very interested in things super interested in things and uh, you couldn't stop them from doing things. They want to know, you know, you hear about these people all the time. They're, they're running a business and all of a sudden they see a show on uh, sushi, sushi chefing and they decide to go take a class, you know, and then there's other people mm -hmm. just want to be left alone. They want to relax. Mm -hmm. It's sort of like eh, one's a sled dog. The other's a cat. Mm -hmm. One wants to get up on the fridge and take a nap. The other wants to hit the trail. Uh, if you want to get on the fridge and take a nap, there's really... I'm not judging you, but there's not much you can do with that. It's hard, hard to make things happen when you're on top of the refrigerator. Get, get a, Take uh, a nap, right. Yeah, get a, get, a, get a gig over at the phone company, get your benefits, and uh, take... Get on the fridge and take a nap when you get Man, home. Or how about the people who live, are born and raised and live and die in the same small town? Yep, that's me with no home. Never, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, never the see the world or travel or... Yeah, wow. but they don't want to do it, and that's fine, too, yeah, by God the way. Them. that's I got no problem with that. Mm -hmm. But don't don't want all the stuff and go nap on the fridge. That's, right. that's a tortured life. Uh, the worst combination of all is the person that feels entitled to everything mm. just because. Ooh, that's right. That I'm going to sue that, you from on top of the refrigerator. I'm either going <laughs> to sue you or I'm going to declare my superiority because right. I'm intellectually superior whatever. Sit and judge. Take a nap. Yeah. That's right. Angie? Oh, not this Angie. This Angie. Call her Angie. Call her Angie. You're 13. Mm-hmm. What's up? Um, I was just wondering if, like, emotional abuse could affect um, sexual development. Like, a the what of abuse? Emotional abuse. Absolutely. Emotional People, abuse. Mm. kids start trying to use sex automatically as a way of regulating feelings. <clears throat> And also use sex as a weapon. And you'll also sort of act out some of your trauma in your sexual and peer relationships. Mm -hmm. What's up? 13. Yeah. Yeah, it says here you're already uh, acting out a little bit. Oh, <laughs> Yeah. I um yeah I have it's not sex because it's oral in my opinion and it was just mm. with um a girlfriend of mine. Yeah, let me uh, let me let me straighten that out. Let for me you. straighten this out. And and 
first off, it's sex at any age, but maybe at 26, it's less than it is. At 13, that's sex. Uh, everything's sex. Yeah. Everything beyond hand holding in my uh, right. book is sex. I mean, that's you're 13 right. performing oral on mm. your female friend. Something's up. Big time. Uh oh. Like big time. Have a phone line, You think? Yes. Yeah, no, we no do. No doubt. No doubt. Here's here's the problem: is you get uh, shot out of a cannon down a certain trail that leads into a brick wall yeah. when you're about 17 or 18. So what are we going to do, Angie? I, I don't know, man. No, I'm talking in studio, Angie. All right. You're a mess, baby. Come on. <laughs> Hannah, slow down, <laughs> Angie. Slow down, honey. Were you abused? Just you verbally, abused. emotionally, and, and physically too. I guarantee it. Okay. No, 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 physically, no. N no one ever hit you. No, not one. Okay, once when I was like five, but that was uh -huh. All right, but well, look, here's the deal. You're, you're 13. You sound like you're 33. You're acting like an adult. You're in the seventh or eighth grade. Let's go. Jeez. We, what's the future hold? I mean, can um, you get some counseling? Yeah, I, I plan to. Go but ahead, I mean, I'm not one of those kids who are like, well, I really want to go to junior college. You know, I'm not. I've, I've yeah. Well, look, that's not even important a, a, to you right Angie, now. Angie, you're not going to live to see junior college let me if you just, don't do something about that. Let me this. just say this: uh, you're you're a smart person. I can hear it. Yeah. You're you're wise beyond your years. You're 13, but you're also acting like a 23 year old when you're 13. You can't do that. It's going to get you into trouble. You can't process all that stuff. Yeah. Uh, find friends, have relationships that aren't sexual. Mm. Hang out with people smarter than you, everyone. Hang out with people Healthier. that are more successful and more healthy mm -hmm. than you. And that's one of our keys to success. we got to take a break. It's easy to hang out with the doofuses and be the king of the retards. <laughs> that's uh, that's fine, fine and dandy. And it's humbling to hang out with people that are maybe getting better grades, maybe right. more successful, maybe more together. It's very humbling because now you're at the bottom of the pyramid. Better to be at the bottom of the successful pyramid than to be at the top of the tarred pyramid. Yep. <laughs> Thank you. We'll right. take a quick break. We'll be right back after top this. Top of the tards. Yeah. That's a show, everybody. Where'd the time go? Flew by. Always interesting. Angie from The Apprentice. Website? Website. Angie McKnight. Angie McKnight .com. Go on that site and, uh, and find what? Where I'll be appearing with my show, my oh, cabaret right. show, and I wrote a book of songs and all that. She's a wonderful singer. I heard her screaming from the top of her lungs <laughs> through this paper thin wall. <laughs> so like Madeline Kahn and yes. Frankenstein. Yeah, it's, 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 you know they're doing oh, the musical. She I'm hits the high C going for that she part. Has the big wow. O. That's a big O. I'd be great at yeah. that part. Big O. Big O. High C. That's big how it o. works. That's, right, That's baby. what it translates into multiple, <laughs> multiple machine gun. All right, so. <laughs> That's very true, though. Multiple. I, I want to be the Gene Wilder part. <laughs> yeah. Until, uh, you got the same hair. <laughs> Until uh, next time, Sam Kroll for Dr. Drew saying mahalo. This has been Loveline. Loveline. The opinions expressed on this show are not necessarily those of the staff, management, sponsors, or this station. Or the station. The, the producer for Loveline is Annie Gold. Loveline is a presentation of Westwood One Entertainment.